This is the video you've been waiting for. The ultimate revision for Jam Mathematics 2023. If you want to score above 80% in your exam, watch this video completely. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 2023. And we're about to take the revision video for this very year's Jam exam. Now, if you've not watched the last year's video, I advise you to do so by clicking this very link so that you would actually join the knowledge of last year to the video of this year as it would help you a lot. So in this very series, I'll be solving 40 possible questions, same way I did last year. And if you go to the comment section of last year's video, you will see that there were testimonies after the JAM exam. Now, please, I do not work for JAM and as such, um, I am not telling you with 100% certainty that these questions are what you will see, but these very questions are your possible questions and there's a 50 to 60% chance that you would see them. So let us get started with the first question. Remember, if you've not hit the subscribe button, please do so and like this very video. So the first question says, find the value of m if 13 base m plus 24 base m is equal to 41 base m. So that's number basis. So we have 13 base m plus 24 base m equal 41 base m. So to get started, the first thing we have to do is to make everything, um, we have to convert this to base 10. So what we we'll simply do is um, we'll put zero here, we'll put a one, it's a normal thing. So this is 1 times m to the power 1 plus 3 times m to the power 0. Remember your conversion. Then plus, remember, same thing would also go on here. So this is 0, 1. So I'll say this is 2 times m to the power 1 plus 4 times m to the power 0 equal, same thing here, 4 times m to the power 1 plus 1 times m to the power what? 0. So that's what we have. Now this is 1 times m because anything to the power of 1 is that same thing. Then plus 3 times m to the power of 0 is 1 because n to the power of 0 is 1. Then plus 2 times m plus 4 times 1 equal 4 times m plus 1 times 1. Just follow the same procedures as I've done in previous exercises. Okay. So 1 times m is just m, plus 3 times 1 is just 3, plus 2 times m is 2m, then 4 times 1 is 4, and this will be equal to 4 times m is 4m, then 1 times 1 is 1. So this is what we have. Let us proceed. Uh, m plus 2m will give us 3m. Remember, there's an imaginary one at this very point. So when you add them up, you're going to get 3m. Then um, 3 plus 4 should be giving us 7. I believe you agree with that. Equal 4m plus 1. This is the part you would then call it like terms. And that would be easy because this is 4m. It's bigger than 3m. So I can easily take this 3m to this other side. So this would then become 7. If plus 1 goes over here, it becomes minus 1. Equal 4m. 3m comes by becomes what? Minus 3m. So 7 take away 1 will give us 6. 4m take away 3m will give us m. So it means our m is equal to 6. So the base is base 6. I'm going to be leaving exercises for you to solve when I'm done with this. So then you are going to see two questions for you to attempt. Their answers will be 7 and 2 respectively. So it's there on your screen. Question 2, without further ado. If the distance of the line joining the point root x comma 1 and 1 comma root x is 3 units, we are asked to find x. When I first saw this question, I said, hmm, this is a very beautiful one because coordinate geometry is very important. So should in case you've not actually gone through questions on coordinate geometry, you have to do that immediately. Coordinate geometry is a must in your exam and it's important you know it. So, this is the distance between root x, comma 1, and 1, comma root x is 3 units. So, that's the question. First of all, what is the formula for distance? 
distance is the square root of x2 take away x1 or squared plus y2 take away y1 or squared. The reason why this question actually gives me chills in a way is because these two guys are kind of the same. You, you'll find out in the future why I actually love this question. Now, our distance is 3 units, so I, I can remove my d and put 3 equal the square root of... Now, how do we label our points? Every point has an x and a y. So this is x, y, x, y. Now, because this is the first point, I'll call this x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. Don't joke with these questions, please. Okay, now this will then become x2 is what 1 minus x1 is what root x all squared plus uh, this very guy that we have here y2 is root x then minus y1 is what 1 all squared hmm looking very 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 sweet in a way can i take away the root i can do that i can remove this very square root guy and what would it be on the other side to become squared because if i should square both sides the square root is gone so this would be equal to 1 minus root x all squared plus root x minus 1 all squared. I actually think that if they want to make this question much more easier for you, they might remove the square root here to make it easy for you in a way. But let us act like this was all we had in the exam. Now what is 3 squared? 3 squared is 9. Kind of easy. Okay, what is 1 minus root x all squared? Hmm, I always advise students for... Um, the students that I teach, I told them that in the course of the exam, I do not advise, except it's inevitable, to actually open this kind of a square. See, do you agree that these two guys are actually the same? Yes, these two guys are the same, like they are perfectly the same. So I won't actually stress myself to open the square. Do you know what I'll do? I'll just double it. If these two guys are the same, this can just become... 2 times 1 of them, which is root x minus 1 all squared. I want to pick this very one. And that's what I want to choose. I want to choose this very one. Now, let me tell you why they are the same. Do you agree that if you square any number, if you square any number, that um, your answer is the same if you put positive or negative? Look what I'm trying to say here. If you have plus 2 all squared, the answer is still plus 4. What if you have minus 2 all squared? The answer is still what? Plus 4. The same thing is happening here, if you try to find out. This is 1 minus root x, right? Okay. 1 minus root x all squared is the same thing as root x minus 1 all squared. Because if you take the negative of this guy, if you multiply this 1 minus root x with minus sign, you will find out that you have root x minus 1. So that both the same, algebraically. So I'll just double it. It's much more better in a way. Okay, so let me now proceed. Now this is 9 equal 2 bracket root x minus 1 all squared. Looking very, very um, sweet in a way. Now what do I do next? And how do I remove this very square? To remove squares, I'm going to say square root. So we're going to take the square root of 9 and take the square root of 2 bracket root x minus 1 all squared. Okay. Like I said, I love this very problem. I don't know, but I kind of love it. Okay, so let us see. Let us see. Let us see. Now, what is the square root of 9? Mm, that's um, 3. So this is 3 equal... The square root of 2, does it have an answer? No. So it means this will become the square root of 2 bracket root x minus 1. Look at what just happened here. This very portion, this very portion, this will become the square root of 2 times the square root of root x minus 1 all squared. So square will cancel square root. They will both take away themselves. We'll then be having root 2 remaining. So that's what we'll then be having. Okay, so let us now proceed with this. This will become 3 equal root 2 bracket root x minus 1. So this is what we have. Kind of still very, very sweet in a way. Now, do you know that I can decide to either open the bracket if I wish to. I can decide to either open the bracket or 
kind of, um, should I say, divide both sides by root 2. It's a thing of choice. You can decide to do it if you want to, or you can decide to just open the bracket. But I won't open the, back, the bracket. I won't do that. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide by root 2. So this will become 3 divided by root 2 equal root x minus 1. I kind of prefer this way. Yes, I kind of prefer this very way. So this will become 3 divided by root 2 equal root x minus 1. Now the next thing I will do is to take my minus 1 to this other side, right? So it will then become 3 over root 2 plus 1 equal to what? Root x. Now, um, the next thing I would then do is to kind of, um, you know, to get my x, what do I have to do to remove this very square root sign? I have to square both sides. I have to square both sides. So that means I'll be having um, 3 all over root 2 plus 1 all squared equal to what? x. Now, if you were actually in some of my classes and if you watch some of my videos, I've taught you how to open squares very, very fast. But let me just do this in um, a little bit of time. What does this square mean? This means 3 over root 2 plus 1 multiplying another 3 over root 2 plus 1. Equal to what? X. Now let us do this carefully. 3 times 3 is 9 over root 2 times root 2 is what? 2. Then 3 over root 2 times this very one will still give us what? 3 all over what? Root 2. Plus 1 times 3 over root 2 is 3 over root 2. Then plus 1 times 1 is what? 1 equal to what? X. I think I can squeeze this here. Now this is 9 over 2. 9 over 2 plus 1. What do you think that will give to us? 11 over 2. So this is 11 over 2. That was actually easy, right? Look at it here. See? I think we'll have to learn how to add fractions very, very fast. So we have 9 over 2 plus 1. The SCM here is 1, right? So the SCM of 2 and 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 9 is 9. Plus 2 divided by 1 is 2. Times 1 is 2. So 9 plus 2 will give us what? 11 over 2. So that was how I got it. Now, this other part, look at this. Look at what I'm about to do. 3 over root 2 plus another theory over root 2. What do you think that will give to us? It will give us what? 6 over what? Root 2. Then, this will be called of x. Yes. Now, what do I do next? I would say, this is 11 over 2, plus, I can rationalize this very part. I can take the uh, rational value of this. So, this is 6 all over root 2, times root 2 all over what? Root 2. They call it what? x. So this is 11 over 2 plus 6 times root 2 is what? 6 root 2 divided by root 2 times root 2 is what? 2. Root 2 times root 2 will give us just what? 2. Equal to what? X. So finally, finally, what we then have here would then become 11 plus 6 root 2 over 2. Equal to what? X. And this would become the final result to the question. So we then have 11 plus 6 root 2 divided by 2. Question 3. The grades of 72 students are shown in the pie chart above. How many students had merits? Okay, well the first thing uh, for us to do here is clearly stated. If you look at the diagram, okay, so it's still showing look at the diagram, you will notice that almost all the angles are given, apart from merit, almost all angles are being given apart from merit. So pass has 130 degrees, credit has 70 degrees, distinction has 90 degrees, but merit has no angle. Now, there are different ways of solving this very type of question, but um, let me go through the normal process. Um, first thing first, let us find out the angle for merit. Now, you would agree with me that the sum of angles in a circle will give us 360 degrees. So, it means merit plus credit plus distinction plus pass will give us a 360 degrees. So, that's what to give to us. And I would then say merit plus credit is 70 degrees. Um, distinction is 90 degrees because of that very symbol there. 
then passes 130 degrees, and this will be called a 360 degrees. So this is m plus 70 plus 30 will give us 160. We give us 160. 160 here will give us 290. So this plus 290 degrees equal 360 degrees. So m will then become 360 degrees minus 290 degrees. So m will be giving us 70 degrees. Yes. So it means the angle for merit is 70 degrees. So what can it be? Okay, 70, 70. Okay, that's, that's fine. So that's merit. The next thing I will then do is this. The question says, how many students had merit? Well, number of students with merit, number for merit is equal to the angle, the angle for merit divided by the total angle in a circle times the number of students. So this is very, very correct. So the angle we have is what? 70 degrees divided by total angle in a circle is 360 degrees times number of students is 72 students. So, as always, um, degrees, we cancel degrees. Zero, we take away zero. 36 here is one. 36 into 72, we give us two. So, we're left with seven times two, which is 14 students. So, that will become the result to that very um, question. For the exercise, check the last year's revision video. I would also link it up here again. So, watch that very video. You will see the pie chart that I treated for last year's edition. Okay, question four. Find the inverse of the matrix two, four, four, six. Two, four, four, six. Okay, so that's question four. So we have four. Now, to get started, the formula for inverse is inverse one over determinant determinant times adjoint that's the formula for determinant sorry that's the formula for inverse so let us get started with determinant now what is the determinant of two four four six so what do we do and how do we find determinant of a two by two matrix two times six we're going to say two times six minus four times four so that's how we do that 2 times 6 is what? 12. Minus 4 times 4 is what? 16. 12 take away f um, 16 is what? Minus 4. So that means this is your what? This is your determinant. Now what is adjoint? The adjoint of a matrix, sorry, so let me use it above parenthesis. So we have um, this guy, 2, 4, 4, 6. Now, how do we find adjoint? Adjoint is simply for a two by two matrix. Adjoint is simply flipping elements in the principal diagonal, or we call it leading diagonal. So these two six will become six two. So this six two. Then we'll multiply this other diagonal by minus one. So this will become minus four minus four. Or you can simply say give the minuses to make life easy for you. So just give them minuses. Now, we cannot evaluate our inverse. So inverse is equal 1 over. What is our determinant? Determinant is minus 4. And what is our adjoint? This is our adjoint. So we have 6 minus 4 minus 4, 2. Now, depends on how the answer is being left. This can be your final result. But what if the answer was not left like this? Do you know we can multiply? Yes, we can. This will become... 6 times this will give us 6 over minus 4. Minus 4 times will give us minus 4 over minus 4. This times this will give us minus 4 over minus 4 again. Then this times will give us 2 over minus 4. Remember that 1 will be the guy multiplying. Then you, your denominators are going to have minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. Now I become the final answer here. Minus 3 over 2, 1. Sorry, 1, 1, and minus 1 over 2. So the answer can be left like this or like this. 
So it depends, but it's still going to be what? Correct. So you can attempt that the next question showing on your screen. The answer for that is minus 1, 4, 1, minus 3. Question 5. So we have question 5. It says, evaluate the integral of 15x cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x plus 10 with respect to x. Yep, you heard that right. Whenever you see, whenever you see um, integration, it's actually simple. So we're going to be having that as question 5. So we have the integral of 15x cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x plus 10 dx. This dx means with respect to x. Now, how do we do this? Okay, now to get started, this is 15, a constant. The rule for integration says we should add 1 to the power. So this will become x to the power of 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1. It's a general rule in integration. You can check out my videos on that. So this same 3 plus 1 is going to repeat itself here, 3 plus 1. Then plus this guy is 5s squared. So I'm going to say 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1. Then plus this is 2x. Now remember that there's an invisible one here, right? So this is 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 10. Hmm, what is going to happen to the 10? The 10 will just become 10x. Now why is it 10x? Do you know ideally that 10 is actually 10s to the power of 0? Because n to the power of 0 is 1. So x to the power of 0 is 1. 1 times 10 is still 10. So logically, I can just say, some test book will just tell you to attach x to it. Some test book might just say attach x to it. So it's a choice. Or you can say 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1. It's still the same thing. Then plus c. Don't forget to add your constant. So this will become 15x to the power of 4 over 4 plus 5x to the power of 3 over 3 plus 2x squared over 2 plus 10x plus c. The answer can be left like this or the final answer. 15 over 4s to the power of 4 plus 5 over 3x to the power of 3 plus 2 can cancel 2. So this is s squared plus 10x plus c. So that will be the answer for question 5. You can attempt the question showing on your screen right now. So the answer is right there. Next question, question 6. The locus of a point at a fixed distance, or the locus of points at a fixed discount, the distance rather, from a line is dash. Okay, look at it this way. Let us look at it this way. Locus is a very interesting topic. And I'm going to be leaving a link for you to watch a video that treats only locus of point. Only locus of point. I will leave it there. Now, locus has four main theory. It should, should in case you're taking jam, you need these four theorems to understand it. So you can watch that very video to perfectly understand what locus is all about. Okay. Now, the answer to this question, based on the theory, says that if you are discussing about a fixed distance from a line, the result is actually a pair of parallel lines away from that very line or on the other side of the line. Let me explain a little. Now, what he's trying to say is this. There's a line. There's a line. This is a line. Let me call this line A, B. For example, imagine if somebody tells you to draw a fixed distance of 4 meter from this very line. Somebody asks you to draw 4 meters from this very line. Do you know a student might possibly take out his ruler and draw the 4 meter above the very line? Somebody can draw this very line above it, right? And the distance from here to here is what? 4 meter. Then another student somewhere comes and draws it below the very line AB. That very student will still be correct. Because what is Locus discussing? Locus is asking what is the set of all possible, all possible location or possible points that can satisfy a particular condition so what's the condition here you are drawing four meter or you are drawing a fixed distance from this very line it can be above the line 
or below the line. So what will this thing form? It will form a parallel line because the distance from here to here is 4 meter, 4 meter. Or you can say the distance is fixed because no matter how you draw this very line, their distance will still remain the same. They can never meet. And as such, the answer to this is a pair of parallel lines at the fixed distance from the line and on the other side of the line. So we are going to have it above the line and below the line. So that's the answer. Though, you are going to watch that very other video for Locus. It treats other theorems and explanation for other theorems. So let us look at question number seven. So question number seven says, oh, it's a probability question. A basket contains five red balls. A basket contains five red balls, four blue balls, and five white balls. Full stop. If two balls are picked at random without replacement, find the probability of picking two red balls. So we pick two balls without replacement. So it means we picked the first one we did not replace. Then we picked another one and we did not replace. So the question is what is the probability of picking two balls? Now, first of all, if you don't replace something, it means there's going to be a reduction. That's all right, and it's okay. So let us start solving the question. So the first one we're going to do is to sum up the number of balls. So the first, um, where is the question seven? The sum of balls, the sum of balls, um, this is five plus four plus five. So that means we have 14 balls. Yes, so that's the meaning. We have 14 whole balls. Okay, now if this is going to work out for us, Probability, probability of picking two red balls. So let us get started, which actually means probability of picking red, that's the both balls are red, times probability of picking another red. Probability of red, red, that's the meaning. Probability, red, comma, red. Now, the thing is this, let us start. We, how many balls are red there? Five red balls, this is red. This is blue and this is white. So how many red balls are there? Five red balls. So this is five over, what is the total number of balls? 14. So this is going to happen. This guy is going to happen. If and only if we are picking this guy first. Times, one has selected another red ball. Another red ball is being selected. Now, remember they said without replacement. If you remove one red ball, how many red balls will be remaining? Four red balls will be remaining. Divided by, what would then become a total number of balls if we now have only four remaining? It means we'll be having what? 13. That's reasonable. Sincerely reasonable. Because it will then become four plus four plus five. Because you, it has reduced by what? One. Now, can four go here? We have, sorry, two goes here. It's two. Two here will give us what? Seven, right? Okay. So we're left with five times two is 10 divided by seven times 13 should be 91, if I am not mistaken. Yes. So the answer to that question will become 10 over 91. So that's what we have. 10 divided by 91. The next question will be for you. Remember, if you see either or, you are going to add. If you see either or, you should be adding. Okay, question eight on differentiation. It says, if y is equal 7x cubed plus 5x squared minus 10x plus, uh, what do we have there? Plus 6, you have to find dy dx. Very easy. So we have 8. y is equal 7x cubed plus 5x squared minus 10x plus 6. So we have dy dx equal, we can do this pretty straightforward. Now, what does dy dx mean for polynomials, or should I say algebraic terms? What we we'll simply do is this. We multiply the coefficient by the power and reduce the power by 1. That's the principle. So we're going to say 7 times 3 here, 21. Then we say x, reduce this very 3 by 1. What would it become? 2. 
because 3 minus 1 is 2. Plus, 5 times 2 is what? 10. Then we have our x reduced 2 by 1. What would it be? 1. Minus, this very s guy is just 1. It's just 1. So 10 times 1 is still 10. Then we have our x reduce 1 by 1. What would we have? 0. When I say reduce 1, I simply mean subtract. So when you say 1 minus 1, you're going to have 0. Then plus, this guy is a constant. If you remember, when I was solving this very integration, I said this very 10. What does the x have here? The power of what? 0. If you're following the same principle, it is a constant. And the first principle for differentiation says, when you differentiate a constant, your answer is what? 0. So this guy is 0. So it means divide the x is going to be equal to 21x squared plus 10x minus 10. Because um, n is to the power of 0 is 1. 1 times 10 is 10. So that will be the answer for that very question. Question number 9. Solve for x. We have log x. We have log x minus log x minus 1 equal to 1. So that's what we have. Log redeems. <laughs> okay. Now, how do we solve this? It's still very, very simple. First of all, if you are subtracting in log redeems, what do you do to the numbers? You divide the numbers. So it means we're going to be having log x divided by x minus 1 equal to what? 1. So that's the meaning. We're going to have log x over x minus 1 equal to what? 1. Now, do you actually remember that log 10, 10 is 1? If you can remember, log 10, 10 is equal to 1. So in rules of logarithm, log 10, 10 is equal to 1. So it means log x over x minus 1 is equal to this very one here is log 10, 10. Remember that when you see a logarithm without a base, that, that very base is base 10, right? So it means log 10 can take away what? Log 10. The numbers are equal to what? Each other. So this x over x minus 1 equal to what? 10. I can say this is 10 over 1 so that I can easily cross multiply. So um, this with times this. So this is 10 bracket x minus 1 equal x with times this. So this s bracket what? 1. 10 times s will give us 10x. 10 times minus 1 is minus what? 10. Equal x times 1 is what? x. Now this is 10x. Can this very x come over? It becomes minus x. Equal minus 10 goes over, it becomes 10. 10x minus x will give us 9x equal to 10. How do we get our x finally? Divide both sides by 9. So s is equal to 10 over what? 9. So this will become our result. Very um, easy, you know. Very, very easy. So um, you're going to solve the next two questions. The next two questions also, even though they involve quadratic equations. Yes. So it's very easy. When you are multiplying two logarithms, you would actually, sorry, when you're adding two logarithms, you'll multiply the numbers. Okay. Question number 10. Haha. <laughs> That's a question I never believed would actually come out in the exam. I actually thought that that very question would not show up. But for some reasons, it did. My student met me last, after last year, German. They were like, we saw quadratic inequalities in our exam and i'm like why would you be giving that but i remember that it is actually very easy to solve and there was a time in jam where they actually bring questions like that so right now we're about to take the question on quadratic inequalities now remember to hit the subscribe button like this very video share it to your friends okay so let us see you have to solve the inequality 2 minus x greater than s squared. So that's question number 10. We have 2 minus x greater than x squared. Okay, there's a video I made, a very long ass video on quadratic inequality. Not just, okay, I made a video on inequalities, but a part of it deals with quadratic inequalities. So you can actually skip to that very part. I made the video in chapters. So you can easily just click the chapter and go to quadratic inequality to watch it. Otherwise, I will link the video up there so you can view it. I've made 
a very comprehensive video on inequalities. Once you are done watching that very video, you won't need any other video on inequalities. So how do we solve this? Um, okay, first things first, first things first, let us make it look quadratic, meaning let us make it become greater than zero or less than zero. Let us do that. That's the first thing we would want to do. So this is S squared and it's positive, right? Leave it that way. Every other guy should go and make it. So what does that mean? I'll be having zero here, greater than S squared, minus S comes where it becomes plus X, two goes where it becomes minus what? Two. That's step number one. Um, step number two, I believe we are used to having our algebraic terms at the left hand side. So it's better if everything comes to this very side. So this is S squared plus X minus two. This will then become less than zero. Remember in inequalities, you don't, you don't mess with the signs. So if you are reversing everything, you also have to reverse the sign. Okay. Now, this is what we have. Now, how do we factorize this? Because we have to factorize right now. Now, the sign here is 1, right? The sign here is 1. So, you ask yourself a very sweet question. What can you multiply? Two numbers you can multiply to give you minus 2. Add the same numbers to get 1. What are the numbers? Numbers are minus 2 and plus, sorry, plus 2 and minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 times minus 1 is what? Minus 2. So let us go ahead and factorize, even though there's a shortcut for that, but you can watch my videos. I actually make YouTube shorts on how to factorize easily. So this is S squared, but I want to do this carefully because you don't need to mess with this very sign. So this is 2x, sorry, S squared plus 2x minus 1x minus 2 less than 0. Between these two guys, what's common? This is x bracket, s squared over x is x, plus 2x over x is 2, minus, between 1x and 2, what is common? 1 is common. So this is 1 bracket, minus x away minus, 1 takes away 1, what's left? x, minus taking away minus, that will give you a plus, because minus minus is what? Plus. Then 2 divided by 1 is 2, less than 0. So how would this now be? These two brackets are what? The same. So this is x plus 2. Then what are the guys outside? X minus 1. And what would this be equal to? It's less than 0, not equal to. So it's less than 0. Now this is the tricky part. I've seen some test books. Um, I don't want to call names. They would just say this is less than 0, this is less than 0. Because they are assuming it's still the same pattern as an equation. But it is not. You have to be very careful with inequalities. Now look at this. This is a shortcut I use. This is a shortcut I use. I said, the junior of these two factors, the smaller of the two factors, is going to take this very sign that you are seeing. And then, the eldest is going to take the reverse of that very sign. So right now, between x plus 2 and x minus 1, which one do you think is actually smaller? Obviously, it's minus 1. Because they both have x and x, so forget about the x, look at the numbers. Minus 1 is here, right? So, minus 1 is the smaller guy. So I'm going to say, x minus 1 is less than zero or x plus two is greater than zero you can see what i just did these signs are not the same you have to be very careful that is why you have to go watch that very video on inequalities it is very 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 important so this is x less than if minus one goes all to become ordinary one or x greater than plus two goes all to become minus two now this is the answer but for some reasons, if you have a complete solution, you can combine the inequalities. You can combine the inequalities and have a complete solution. So let us see and combine these solutions. 1 and minus 2. Minus 2 is much more smaller. So I have to write minus 2 less than x. Look at it this way. If s is greater than minus 2, that means s is bigger than it. It means minus 2 is smaller than x. That's the meaning. And this same x that is here is the same x that we have here and it's less than one so i'll just put less than one this will then become the complete solution to that very question mind you you can only combine inequalities if they are of this very pattern watch my video on inequality for more question 11 
a sector of a circle with radius 6 cm subtends an angle it subtends an angle of 60 degrees at the center at the center full stop calculate its perimeter in terms of pi now i said something here do not joke with circles in your exam now i'm not talking about circle geometry no 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 that's even way i am away from it circles in terms of measuration length of, a, of an arc perimeter of a sector segments um areas you don't joke with them please if there's anything you want to revise immediately after this video remember you must watch this video completely to gain everything that i have in stock for you okay so please and please watch completely now i said don't joke with what length of an arc segment sector length of a chord all of these guys are very very important so right now what is the formula for perimeter of a sector please take notes perimeter of a sector is equal to arrow plus theta over 360 degrees times 2 pi arrow that's the formula for uh, what's it called for perimeter of a sector 2 arrow plus theta over 360 degrees times 2 pi arrow so we're told that the radius is 6 the angle is 60 this will become 2 bracket 6 cm plus the angle is 60 so this is 60 degrees divided by 360 degrees times 2 pi times our arrow is what 6 cm now if you remember they said in terms of pi in terms of pi means your answer is going to be having a pi meaning don't remove pi don't replace pi with 22 over 7 leave pi the way it is okay um 60 here is 1 60 into this will give me what 6 now 6 can cancel 6 here right so i'll be remaining we'll be having 2 bracket 6 cm plus 2 pi right now look at these two guys what is common here 2 is common sorry 2 is common so this is 2 bracket 6 plus pi cm so this will become the final answer or 2 brackets pi plus 6 cm so that will be the final result to that very question very sweet one so that's the answer to that very question question 12 an arc of a circle of length 22 cm subtends an angle of 3s at the center of the circle you are asked to find the value of x if the diameter of the circle is 14 cm hmm. okay so to get started with you're asked to find the value of x you're given the diameter now look at this the length of an arc this question 12 length of an arc is equal to theta over 360 degrees times 2 pi r that's the formula for length of an arc now this is 2 r right do you agree that 2 r is actually your diameter yes so i can rewrite this as length equal to theta over 360 degrees times pi d makes life easy for me at this point i can now proceed so i was told i was told that um the angle is 3x right so see what i'm going to do i'm going to say this is length equal theta pi d divided by 360 degrees if i say over one here what would i do i will cross multiply so one time this will give me theta pi d equal 360 degrees times l remember this is what this is theta so this is theta equal 360 degree l over pi d what did i just do i divided both sides by pi d it makes life easy for me let us see this is theta equal okay let me just use it mm, okay let us use it from this very formula this very guy there's a reason why because 
pi is going to be giving me, I'm going to have a fraction. And I can either use this or I can use this. It's my choice. Let me use this very one before you think I'm trying to escape from something. This is 360 degrees times. What is the length of the um, arc? 22 cm divided by what is pi? 22 over 7 times what is the diameter? 14. Do you know I've gotten everything that I need in this question? 7 here is 1, 7 here is 2, right? Makes life easy for me. 22 becomes 22, right? Makes life also easy for me. 2 here is 1. 360 in 2 places will give us what? 180 degrees, right? Life is kind of easy for me. Now, this is theta equal to 180 degrees. But do you know that the question says the angle is 3x? So it means this theta is what? 3s equal to what? 180 degrees. So what would I do next? I will say divide both sides by what? 3. So s is equal to 180 degrees over 3. s is equal to 60 degrees. So this is the final result to that very question. So the next one is question 13. Given that y minus 2 is a factor of y cubed minus 4y squared plus 3y plus 4. Find the value of k. Well, this is polynomials and it's a topic you need to take very seriously. So, this very guy is talking about factor theorem. We're talking about the factor theorem. So, see what we're going to do here. We're told that y minus 2 is a factor. So, what I will do is to make the factor equal to 0. Because I'm going to pretend as if it's going to divide the polynomial. Please remember the factor theorem says that if you divide any polynomial by its factor, remainder is always 0. So we're going to pretend as if we're finding remainder and equate it to 0. So this y minus 2, I'm going to say equal to 0. So this y will become 2 because minus 2 will go over to become ordinary 2. Now the polynomial, the polynomial is y cubed minus ky squared plus 3y plus 4. This is the polynomial. The remainder is going to become, anywhere you see why you put 2. So this is 2 cubed. Minus k bracket 2 squared plus 3 bracket 2 plus 4. I'm going to remove the remainder and put 0 because y minus 2 is a factor. So it means everything is going to be equal to 0. 2 cubed is 8 minus 2 squared is 4. And 4 times k is 4k plus 3 times 2 is 6 then plus 4. Now this is 0 equal um, or I can just say, minus 4 comes out, what it become? It becomes 4k. Minus 4k goes out, becomes 4k. 8 plus 6 plus 4 will give us what? 18. So what would I do next? Divide both sides by what? By 4. So k is equal 18 over 4. And if you divide this, you'll be getting 9 over 2 as your final answer. So that would be the result for that. So that's your k, 9 over 2. The next question is question 14. A binary operation is defined by x operation y equal 2x minus y, sorry, yes, minus y divided by s squared. You are asked to find the value of 2 operation 3. Now, this topic is very, very important, and you will see questions on binary operation. Please take note of the difference between number base, which deals with binary numbers, and uh, binary operation are two different things. So take note of that. So we have 2x minus y divided by s squared. You're asked to find the value of 2 operation 3. Another thing you need to take very important is how to find identity element of a binary operation. So you can watch my videos on binary operation. The playlist will be linked up there for you to watch them. Or you can just type binary operation Arvitec. So you see my videos on that. So what would I do here? I was asked to find 2 operation 3. Anywhere you see x, call it 2. Anywhere you see y, it becomes 3. So this is 2 bracket 2 minus 3 divided by what? 2 squared. What's 2 times 2? That's 4 minus 3 divided by what's 2 squared? 4. 4 take away 3 is what? 1 over what? 4. So that will become the answer for that very question. So this straightforward question from binary operation. Now let us go a little bit forward. Question 15 also deals with binary operation. Question 15. 
The binary operation is defined by, okay, it's defined on the set of real numbers by m operation n equal m plus n plus mn. You're asked to find the identity element. To get started with, identity elements can also be called the neutral elements. So we're told that it is defined by m operation n equal m plus n plus mn. That is what it is. So right about now, what does this mean for me? What does it mean for me? I'm going to say, you're asked to find identity elements. Please take note. If you combine anything with identity element E, your answer is going to give you that same thing back. So that's why they call it a neutral element. You combine M with E, your answer is still M. So what I'm going to do here is to first of all, find the value of M operation E. So we have M operation E. M will become M, N will become E. So this is M plus E plus M E. Anyway, you see N, you call it E. If you see M, leave it as what? M. Now, nothing can be done here. You can't add any parts. There are no like terms. So I'm going to then say, recall that M operation E is equal to M. So what is our M operation E? M plus E plus M E equal to what? M. Now, this is E plus M E equal M. Can this M go over? It becomes minus what? M. Now, what is common on this very side? What's common here? E, right? So if E is common, I'll bring it out. Remember that there's an invisible one here, right? So if E should come out, this will become 1 plus M E over E is what? M equal to M take away M is what? 0. Now, what's happening here? These two guys are multiplying themselves, right? And the answer is zero. So what does it mean? Any of them could have been zero. Or you can simply say, divide both sides by one plus m. Let me just do that. Divide by one plus m. So this e bracket one plus m over one plus m equals zero over one plus m. So this will take away this e is equal to what? Zero. Because if you divide anything by zero, your answer is still zero. Sorry, what did I say? If you, what did I say? I said if you divide anything by zero, sorry. If zero divided by anything is zero, don't mind me, sorry. Question 16. The fourth and eighth terms of an AP are 11 and 23 respectively. You're asked to find the first term and common difference. The eighth, sorry, the fourth and eighth terms of an AP are 11 and 23. Please remember that the nth term of an AP is given by A plus N minus 1, bracket D. This is formula for nth term. Now, they talked about the fourth term. So, how will I know the fourth term? C4 is going to become A plus 3D because they said the fourth term, right? So, 4 minus 1 will give us what? 3D. Now, what did they say this is equal to? They said A plus 3D is equal to what? 11, equation 1. What about the eighth term? How do we know the eighth term? Eighth term is going to become a plus seven d because if I say eight minus one, eight minus one will give us what? Seven d equal to what? Twenty three. Then this equation two. Remember that what they're trying to say about the respectively means in the same order. The fourth term is eleven. Eighth term is twenty three. So right about now, what am I going to do next? I'm going to use elimination method. So using elimination method, using elimination method, this A and A are the same, right? So I'm going to take them off by what? Subtracting both equations. So subtract both equations. Subtract both equations. So right now, what's going to happen here? I'm going to say 7D minus 3D equal 23 minus 11. That's what I'm going to do. 7d minus 23, what would that give to me? That would give me 4d. 23 minus 11, that should give me um, 8. That should be is it 8. Hold on. Not 8. This should be giving me 12. Sorry. That should be giving me 12. 23, take away 11. That's a 12. Okay. Now what do we do next? Divide both sides by 4, right? 
towards your D, this is going to become 12 over 4, which will become 3. So it means your common difference is what? Three. That's a common difference. Now do we get the first term? I'll say put D equal to 3 in equation what? 1. Or any of the equation I choose to. So A plus 3D is equal to 11. This is A plus 3 bracket. What is our D? D is equal to 3. Equal to 11. So this A plus 3 times 3 is 9. Equal to 11. A is equal to 11. Can this plus 9 come over? Becomes minus 9. So this A equal to what? 2. Because 11 minus 9 is 2. So this is your D. Sorry, this is your A. And this is your D. So you've gotten the result for that very guy. Question 17. The second and fifth terms of a GP are 15 and 1875 respectively. You have to find the first term and common difference. Now you have to be careful here. They said the second term and the fifth term. For a GP, for a GP, this is question 17. For a GP, the nth term is a arrow to the power of n minus 1. So if they say the second term, the second term will become a arrow will then have 2 minus 1, right? But I shouldn't be writing this because of time. So 2 minus 1 is going to become my um, second term. And what did they say that will be equal to? This will be equal to 15. And this is a arrow. 3 minus, sorry, 2 minus 1 is what? 1. There's no need for you to write the 1. So just leave it like that. Equal to what? 15. Equation what? 1. That's equation 1. Now the next one says the fifth term. The fifth term. Because the question says the second and fifth term of a GP. So what would then become the fifth term? You can do this a little bit faster. This is a arrow. Since it said fifth term, 5 minus 1 will give you what? 4. And this is equal to what? 1875. This is equation what? 2. So let us find the first term and common ratio. Looking at these two guys, I cannot say let me add or subtract. What can I do? I can divide instead. So I'll say divide both equations. Divide both equations. So this will become a arrow to the power of 4 over a arrow equal 1875 over 15. A will take away A. Remember that at this very part, it was to the power of 1 before. 2 minus 1 is 1, right? So remember that this was 1 formally. Now this is arrow. 4 minus 1 is what? 3. Why did I say minus? Remember that in indices, if you are dividing, you are going to subtract powers. Now what would this guy give to you? 1875 divided by 15. It should be 125. 125. So this is arrow cube equal 125 is 5 to the power of what? 3. That's 1 to 5. In this is 1 to 5 is 5 to the power of what? 3. So it means your arrow is equal to what? 5. Because the powers are now what? The same. The powers are the same. So that is your arrow. Arrow is equal to what? 5. To get my first term, I'll say put r equal to 5 in equation 1. So equation 1 says a r is equal to what? 15. Now this is a times, what is our arrow? 5 equal to what? 15. So what would I do here? I'm going to say divide both sides by what? 5. So we have a times 5 over 5 equal 15 over what? 5. 5 will take away 5. A is equal to what? Theory. So that's our result for that very guy. A is equal to what? Theory. Question 18. A regular polygon has each of its interior angle as 135 degrees. The question says, what is the number of sides of the polygon? Please take note. When you are given the value of an interior angle inside, the result for this, this should be 18, right? Okay. The result for this will become, let us first of all find the exterior angle. Remember that interior angle plus exterior angle will give you 180 degrees. 
the interior angle is already what 135 degrees so this is 135 degrees plus exterior angle equal 180 degrees so that means the exterior angle is going to become 180 degrees if 135 goes by to become minus 135 degrees so exterior angle is equal 45 degrees that's your result for that the exterior angle but the question says how many sides what is the number of sides of that very polygon so remember number of sides number of sides is equal 360 degrees divided by what exterior angle so this 360 degrees all over what is the exterior angle 45 degrees so all this gives to you eight sides because when you divide that you're going to be having eight as your answer so that'll be the result for 18. number 19 given that sine theta is equal to 12 of uh, 13 find one plus cos theta now you were told that sine theta is equal 12 over 13. remember from Sokatoa that sine is equal opposite over hypotenuse meaning the remaining side here is your what your adjacent now i would say using pythagoras theorem using pythagoras theorem using pythagoras theorem i'm going to say the hypotenuse squared is equal opposite squared plus adjacent squared now what is the hypotenuse 13 because it's a denominator hypotenuse is 13 opposite is 12. so this is 13 squared equal 12 squared plus what adjacent squared now what's 13 squared 169 equal what 144 because 12 squared is 144 plus adjacent squared now the next thing i will do is to take 144 to the other side i'm going to take it to the other side so that means i'll be having 169 minus 144 equal adjacent squared okay yes to become minus so all this gives to us 25 is equal adjacent squared to remove the square what do you do take the square root of the other side so the square root of 25 will give us adjacent it means our adjacent is equal to what is equal to what five because the square root of 25 is what five good the question actually says find one plus cos theta now this is one plus what is the formula for cos theta from so katwa it is adjacent over hypotenuse now this is one plus what is the adjacent after we're done solving five over what is the hypotenuse remember the hypotenuse is equal to what 13. okay so this will be giving us what one on number five over what 13. so that will become the answer for that very question question 20. find a number of ways of selecting six out of ten subjects find the number of ways of selecting six out of ten subjects please take note if you are selecting if you are selecting that combination if you are arranging that permutation so right about now what i'm going to do here is to simply say that the result for this is going to become 10 combination 6 because i am picking 10 sorry i'm picking six subjects from 10 subjects so what will be the answer of this remember that the formula for combination says n combination r is equal n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial so this is going to become 10 factorial over what's 10 minus 6 that's 4 factorial right then we are then going to have 6 factorial so this is what we will be having now i'm going to go forward and i'm going to say the answer can be left like this but what if they go further so 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial i stopped at 6 factorial because at the denominator i have 6 factorial no need for me to continue then divided by what is 4 factorial 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 then times leave your 6 factorial like that so they can easily cancel out now this is 8 right at the top 
4 times 2 will still give us 8, right? So it means 4 times 2 will cancel what? 8. Now 3 here is 1. 3 into 9 is what? 3. So what are we left with? 10 times 3 times 7. So I'll just give to you 210 ways. So that will become the answer for that very question. It was kind of easy. 21. In how many ways can the letters of the word minimum be arranged if the vowels must be together? In how many ways can the letters of the word minimum be arranged if the vowels must be together? Okay. Well, many a times this question can just be given to you without condition. Now, if it's without condition, please take note. If it's without condition, it's much more easier. So, see what I'm going to do here. They said minimum. 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 And they said if the vowels must be together, that's the condition. So, I'm not going to do this the normal way. The normal way is actually very easy. So, let us do it with this condition. Now, what are the vowels here? I is a vowel. This is also I. And U is a vowel, right? What I'm going to do is to... Pretend that they are just a single thing, like just one thing. So this is I, I, you. I'm going to call this guy, let me call it one, because the voice are to be together. So let me just call it one guy. Now what will be remaining? I'll be having M, N, M, N. That's actually realistic in a way. It is realistic because the voice are now together. Then I have the consonant separate from it. Now see how I'm going to solve this. See how I'm going to solve this. Remember, I'm calling everything inside this very box one item, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five. So this will become five factorial over how many consonants do I have here? I have like how many are repeating? How many consonants are repeating? One, two, three. So this is three factorial times. I can now go back inside the bracket. How many letters are in this bracket? Three. So this three factorial times how many things are repeating inside this very bracket? Two. So this will become two factorial. Now can I proceed? I can say this will take away this, right? I can do that. Now what is five factorial? Five times four times three times two factorial. Divided by what are the denominator? Two factorial. So this can cancel this. What are we then left with? 5 times 4 is what? 20. Times 3 is what? 60. So the answer for this will become 60 ways. The answer will become 60 ways. Question 22. Rationalize. You are asked to rationalize that very expression. 2 minus root 5 divided by 3 minus root 5. So how do we go on that? So 22. Okay. So this is 2 minus root 5 divided by 3 minus root 5. How do we rationalize? Multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the fraction's denominator. Well, that sounds like a lot of things, but it's very simple. Denominator here is 3 minus root 5. So what become the conjugate? To so become 3 plus root 5, then 3 plus what? Root 5. Multiply by the same thing. The same thing. Now, what will be the next thing I'm going to do? I'm going to simply multiply my normal way. So this will times this, and this will times this. So this is 2 minus root 5, multiplying 3 plus root 5, divided by 3 minus root 5, multiplying 3 plus root 5. 2 times 3 is what? 6. 2 times root 5 will give me what? 2 root 5. Minus root 3, sorry, minus root 5 times 3 is minus 3 root 5. Minus root 5 times plus root 5 will give me minus 5. Because root 5 times root 5 is just 5. Divided by, at the denominator, what would I do? I'm going to use difference of two squares because they are almost the same. The only difference is minus and what? Plus. So I'm going to say 3 times 3, 9. Minus times plus, minus. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. Remember, you can only do this when there's a difference of two squares. 6 minus 5 is 1. 
root 2 root 5, 2 root 5, minus 3 root 5, what I give to me? Minus root 5, or you can say minus 1 root 5, divided by 9 minus 5 is what? 4. So that will become the answer to that very question. Question 23. The ages of three men are in the ratio 3 is to 4 is to 5. If the difference between the ages of the oldest and youngest is 18 years, you're asked to find the sum of the ages of the three men. Now, to get started with, the ratio of uh, theory is to 4 is to 5. So, first of all, sum of ratio. Sum of ratio. This will become 3 plus 4 plus 5. So, all this gives to us 12. So, that is sum of what? Ratio. Now, let me call the total age. Total age. Let me call it um, A. Capital letter A. Let it become a total age. They said the difference between the oldest and youngest. So, let us get started. What become the oldest? The oldest person's age here. Which of these three guys have the biggest letter? Five, right? So this will become five because that's the biggest ratio. Five divided by what is the sum of ratio? Twelve times what? What's their total age? A. So it means the age of the oldest person is going to become five over twelve times that very age. Then what about the youngest? The youngest. It's going to become 3 over 12 times A. 3 because 3 is the smallest of the ratio. So, because it said youngest, meaning say, no, more, 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 a small picking. So, 3 divided by what? 12. Now, they said the difference between their age, meaning the oldest, which is 5A over 12 minus the youngest, 3A over 12, will be giving us 18 years. That's the meaning. The difference between the oldest and the youngest will give us 18. And difference means what? Minus. Now look at this. This is 5a, right? Minus 3a. The denominators are the same. So I can easily subtract the numerator. 5a minus 3a is what? 2a divided by what? 12 equal to what? 18. Now 2 here is 1. 2 here will give me 6, right? So you have a over 6 equal to what? 18. Remember, this can be written as over 1. So, 1 times A will give me what? A. Then, 6 times 18 should be giving me 108, if I am not mistaken. So, this is 108 years. So, this will become their total age. That is going to be their total age. Next question. Question 24. Question 24. A board is 80 cm in length. But it was measured as 120 cm. The question says, find the percentage error. Question 24. Percentage error is equal your error, the error you made, divided by the actual value times 100%. So this will become, what will become the error that they made here? The ball was measured as 120 degrees when it was actually 80 degrees. So the error is 40 because you are going to say 120 minus 80 to get your error divided by what? 80, which is the actual times 100%. Now, what is 120 minus 80? That will give you 40. So it means the error was what? 40 cm. Like the extra that was added, the mistake is 40 divided by 80 times 100 percent now if you would agree with me 40 here is 1 40 into this is 2 2 here is 1 2 into this is what 50 so it means an error of 50 percent was made that is the meaning so 25 you have to simplify 3 over 4 minus 1 over 3 times 4 whole number 1 over 3 Divided by 3 or number 1 over 4. So what do we do here? It's very simple. This is a bracket. I have to start from this. Now, there's an easy way of doing this. There's an easy way of doing this. 3 times 3 is what? 9. Minus 4 times 1 is what? 4. Divided by 4 times 3 is what? 12. Kind of easy for me. Times 
look at if you don't get this if you don't get this what i did is very simple what is the lcm of 4 and 3 12 12 divided by 4 is what 3 3 times 3 9 12 divided by 3 4 4 times 1 4 so it's still the same thing now can i change this very part yes i can 3 times 4 is what 12 12 plus 1 is what 13 so this 13 over 3 divided by what will this become 4 times 3 is what 12 12 plus 1 is what 13 over what 4 9 take away 4 is what 5 right so this is 5 over 12 which is now a single fraction times 13 over 3 times 4 over 13 what did i just do if you change here to times 4 we go up 13 we come down right now let us cancel 13 can cancel 13. 4 here is 1. 4 into 12 is what? 3. So what will be remaining? 5 times 1 is 5. Over 3 times 3 is what? 9. So it means the answer for that is just 5 over 9. Question 26. Question 26. Let us see what that would be. You are asked to solve the simultaneous equation. You are asked to solve the simultaneous equation. So we have 26. So the equations are 2p minus 3q equal to 2 and 4p plus 3q equal to 10. Now remember, I'm going to still use elimination method here because this is 3q and this is 3q. Now how do I eliminate this equation? Do I need to add them or I need to subtract? Please, I need to add them because when you say 3q minus 3q, you get 0. Or when you say minus 3q plus 3q, you get 0. So you are adding, not subtracting. So I'm going to say add both equations. Both equations. 2p plus 4p is what? 6p. 2 plus 10 is what? 12. Can I divide both sides by 2? Yes. So what will it become? 2. Because 12 divided by 6 is 2. I said, what did I even say? I said divide both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 6. 6p, okay, let me just write that. Let me just write it. Let us just take it down. So, I'm going to say divided by 6, divided by 6. So, p is equal to what? 2. It's still the same thing. So, right now, what do I do next? I'm going to find my value for q. So, I'll say put p equal to 2 in equation 1. So equation 1 is 2p minus 3q equal to what? 2. Now this 2, bracket, what is our p? 2 minus 3q equal to what? 2. 2 times 2 is what? 4 minus 3q equal to what? 2. And this minus 3q equal to, can this 4 go over? Becomes minus what? 4. This minus 3q equal to what? Minus 2. How do I get my q finally? Divide both sides by what? Minus 3. This minus 3q over minus 3 equal minus 2 over what? Minus 3. This we cancel this. So q is equal what? 2 over 3. So you have gotten your full values. Question 29. Sorry, 27. You're asked to make x the subject of formula. You're asked to make x subject of the formula. So this is d equal the square root of 6 over x minus y over 2. Now what am I going to do here? The first thing is to remove this very square root. It's because s is inside the so I have to remove the square root first of all. And what is the opposite of square root? Squared. So this will become d squared equals 6 over x minus y over what? 2. What will be the next thing I'm going to do? I'm going to say the LCM here is 2s, right? So I'm going to times everything by 2s. Use 2s to multiply everything. So this is 2x times d squared equal 2x times 6 over x minus 2x times y over 2. 2s times d squared is what? 2s d squared. S we cancel x, right? So what's remaining here? 12, because 2 times 6 will give you 12. Minus 2, we take away 2, right? So what will be remaining here? x, y. The question says, make x the subject. 
So what I'm going to do is, is to take everything that has x, everything that has x, take it to the other side. So this is 2x d squared, 2s d squared. If this minus x I comes out, it will become plus xy equal to what? 12. Now what's common here? This is x bracket. If s should leave this very place, what will be remaining? 2d squared plus if s leave what will be remaining? y equal to what? 12. Now since I am making s subject, what would I divide both sides by? Divide both sides by 2d squared plus y. So it means s is equal to 12 divided by what? 2d squared plus y. That will become the answer to the question. Question 28. Derive the equation whose roots are minus 1 or number 1 over 2 or 5 over 3. Now, there are different ways of solving that very question. But see the method I would prefer to use. I, I like using the method. Now, if they say the roots are that very number, it means x is equal minus 1 or number 1 over 2 or s is equal 5 over 3. So I think I kind of like this method. Now, this will become x equal minus 2 times 1 is what? 2 plus 1 is what? 3. So this is 3 over 2. Or s equal what? 5 over what? 3. If you've mastered this method, you can solve the equation very fast. Now, 2 times s will give us what? 2x equal to minus 3. Or 3 times s will give us 3s equal to what? 5. And this is 2x. Can the minus 3 come over? Becomes plus 3 equal to what? 0. Because nothing will be left on the other side. Or 3s. Can 5 come over? Becomes minus 5 equal to what? 0. Now, this is equal to 0. And this is equal to 0. If I multiply them, my answer will still be equal to 0. So 2s plus 3 multiplying 3x minus 5 is equal to what? 0. If I multiply this answer, I'm going to get my final result. 2x times 3s will give us what? 6s squared. 2x times minus 5 is minus 10x. 3 times 3s will give me plus 9x. 3 times minus 5 is minus 15, equal to 0. Now this is 6s squared. Minus 10x plus 9s will give us minus x. Minus 15, equal to what? 0. So this will become the final answer to that very question. So I think I kind of like this method. You know there's another method actually that says s squared minus sum of roots bracket x plus product of roots. But I do not like using that very method. Question 29. Find the equation of a line passing 3 comma minus 2 and minus 5 comma 4. Remember I told you, don't play with coordinate geometry. Don't play with coordinate geometry. So 29, what am I going to be doing here? Remember that they said the points are 3, minus 2 and minus 5, comma 4. So right about now, what does this mean? How do we find the equation of a line? y minus y1 over x minus x1 is equal y2 minus y1 over x2 minus what? x1. That is how we find the equation of a line. Now, how do we name our points? This is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. So this is y minus. What is y1? Minus 2. So I'm going to put a bracket to indicate the minus. Then divided by x minus. What is x1? x1 is 3. Equal y2 is what? 4 minus. What is y1? Minus 2. Divided by x2 is what? Minus 5. Minus what is x1? 3. So this is how you are going to do it. Let us open the brackets. This is y plus 2 over x minus 3. Equal 4 plus 2 over what? Minus 5 minus 3. Now this is y plus 2 over x minus 3. Equal 4 plus 2 is what? 6 over what? minus 8. 
because minus 5 minus 3 is what? Minus 8. And this is y plus 2 over x minus 3. Equal, I can actually take the minus on top. It's better that way. This is minus. What is common between 6 and 8? It's 2. So I can divide both sides by 2. So this will become 3 over what? 4. When you cancel out with 2, that's what you'll be getting. The next thing I will do is to cross multiply. 4 with times this. So this is 4 brackets y plus 2 equal minus 3 with times this. So this is minus 3 brackets x minus what? 3. So that's what we have. The next thing we do is to open the brackets. 4 times y is 4y. Four, 4 times 2 is 8 equal minus 3 times x minus 3x minus 3 times minus 3 plus 9. Now the next thing we do is to take everything to the other side. Take everything to the other side. Take everything to the other side. So this is 4y plus 8. If minus 3x comes out, it become plus 3x. If plus 9 comes out, it become minus 9. And this will be equal to 0. And this is 4y plus 3x, 8 minus 9. 8 minus 9 is what? Minus 1. Equal to what? 0. So that will become the answer to that very question. Number 30. You have to factorize completely 4x plus 3y all squared minus 3x minus 2y all squared. Now, factorization is very easy and it's prone to be out in the exam. Now, how will I factorize that? Please take note, you don't open this square. It's not as if it can be done, but it's going to be much more stressful for you. So instead, what does this look like? It looks like difference of two squares. So I won't really stress myself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make two brackets. In the first bracket, I'm going to add these guys. In the second bracket, I'm going to subtract them. That's the principle. So first bracket, I'll say 4x plus 3y plus 3x minus 2y. So this is the first bracket. Second bracket, I will subtract them. So I'll say 4x plus 3y minus 3x minus 2y. So this is what we have. Now the next thing I will do is to open these brackets inside. So this is 4x plus 3y plus times 3x is plus 3x plus times minus 2y is minus 2y. Don't what I have here. This is 4x plus 3y minus times 3x minus 3x minus times minus 2y plus 2y. Now this will become 4x plus 3x is what? 7x. 3y minus 2y is just y. Now what do I have here? 4x minus 3x will just give me x. 3y plus 2y will give me what? 5y. So this will become the final answer. So that's what we have. 7x plus y, then x plus what? 5y. Next question. If x varies directly as the square root of y, if x varies directly as the square root of y, and, okay, s is equal to 9 when y is equal to 16, we are asked to find x when y is equal to what? 25. So that's question 31. You are told that x varies directly as the square root of what? y. So it means x is going to be equal to k root y, where your k is your constant of what? Proportionality. Remember, you solve variation. So go and learn variation, learn inverse variation, learn inverse what? Variation. Okay. Now the next thing we'll then be having is we're told that s is equal to what? 9. The first case, s is equal to 9. When y is equal to what? 16. So this is the first, we're solving with the first case. Now this is 9 equal k times, remember that dot means times. What is the square root of 16? 4. Now how do I continue? This will become 4k. To get my k, what would I do? Divide both sides by what? By 4. So it means k will then become 9 over what? 4. 
Now, this is just your constant of what proportionality. How do I get the formula connecting x and y? I'll put this very value back into that very expression. So I'll say recall that s is equal k root y. So this s equal k. Our k is now what? k is 9 over 4. So this is 9 over 4 root y. So this is what they call the formula connecting x and y. Or they say the relationship between x and y. The question that follows says, find x when y is 25. So this is s equal 9 over 4 times, they said y is now what? 25. Now this s equal 9 over 4 times, what is the square root of 25? 5. 9 times 5 is what? 45. Don't forget that there is an over what? 4. So that's your answer. 45 over 4 will become your final answer to the question. Question 32. Question number 32. Question number 32. In a school, 200 students offer biology or mathematics or both. 115 offer biology. 140 offer mathematics. How many students offer biology but not mathematics? In other terms, it means how many students offer biology only, only, and not mathematics. Now, please take note that if this is question number 32, you can decide to draw a Venn diagram if you wish to. So let us kind of draw a Venn diagram. Let us see how that will be. So we have two subjects. Yes, so we have biology and we have mathematics. Now they said 200 students are in the school. So it means universal said is equal to 200. That's the meaning. They said 115 offers biology. So 115 offers biology. 140 offers mathematics. Now, they said how many students offer biology only? To get started with, there are going to be some students that offer both subjects which is the intersection here. So let me call this x. Now, to get biology only, I'm going to say minus x. To get math only, I'm going to say minus what? x. The sum of everything here will be giving me what? 200. So that means 115 minus x plus x plus 140 minus s will give me what? 200. That's the meaning. 115 plus 140. What do you think that will give to me? 255 to give us 200 and what 15 minus s plus s is gone already right so what's remaining here minus s equal to what 200 now this is minus s equal 200 if 25 goes over to become minus 255 now this minus s equal 200 minus 255 is what minus 55 can i take out the negative sign in both of them so S will then become what? 55. So assuming the question just says how many students are offering both subjects, my answer is what? 55. But I won't end there because it said how many students offer biology but not mathematics. So biology only, biology only is 115 minus X. 115 minus X. So this is 115 minus 50 what? So all this be given to us, 60 students. So 60 students are offering biology only. That will be the answer to the question. Question 33. You are asked to evaluate the integral from 1 to 0. Sorry, said 1 to 0. From 0 to 1, you start from the lower limit first. From 0 to 1 of 3 minus 2x with respect to x. So question 33, the integral from 0 to 1 of 3 minus 2x dx. Yes. So to get started with, let us integrate this very function. If you integrate 3, 3 is a constant, right? So how do we integrate 3? Give 3x, that is attach x to it. So this is 3x minus, this is 2x, right? Now remember that this very x has the power of 1. So this will become 2s 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. It's a principle, a rules of integration. You can watch my videos on integration to learn that. Then put your upper and lower limits, 0 and 1. 
Remember, I did not put the constant here because this is a definite integral. Now, this is 3x minus 2x squared over what? 2. 0 to 1. And this is 3x. If 2 takes away 2, it's gone, right? So, I'll be remaining minus s squared from 0 to what? 1. Now, if you look at this carefully, how do we use the 0 and 1? We're going to make two brackets. In the first bracket, x will be 1. In the second bracket, x will be what? 0. So let us go with the first bracket. This will become 3 bracket 1 minus what? 1 squared. What did I just do? Anywhere you see x, you are putting 1. So this is x, I put 1. This is s squared, I put 1. Minus, what would this now be? 3 bracket 0 minus 0 squared. But everything will be 0, so you can forget about the first bracket. Everything here is going to be 0. So all this be 3 minus 1, which is what? 2. Remember that 3 times 1 is 3. 1 squared is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Everything here will give you 0. And if you say minus 0, it's still the same thing. Question number 34. If y is equal 2x minus 3 to the power of 4. If y is equal 2x minus 3 to the power of 4. You are asked to find dy dx at s equal to 2. So question number 34. Y is equal 2x minus 3 to the power of what? 4. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is to find dy. Okay, at s equal to 2. The first thing I'm going to do here is to find dy dx. So dy dx is going to become... Now how do we do this? Remember that there's a 1 in front of this, right? So 1 times 4 is what? 4. Then bracket 2x minus 3. 4 minus 1 is what? 3. So this would have been your answer. But remember that we can still differentiate the function inside. So I'm going to say times. Differentiate this guy. What would you be having? 2. Remember that the 3 is a constant. So differentiate 2. So what would you get? 2. So it means dy dx is going to become 4 times 2 is what? 8. Bracket 2x minus 3 to the power of what? 3. Remember this is a revision series. To understand this better, you can watch the full videos on differentiation. I have almost all videos. Okay. So um, this is your dy dx. But it said at s equal to 2. So it means at s equal to 2, anywhere you see s, you put 2, right? So it means dy dx is going to become 8 bracket 2 bracket 2 minus 3 to the power of 3, right? So this is 8 bracket 2 times 2 is what? 4 minus 3 to the power of 3. This 8 bracket 4 take away 3 is what? 1 to the power of 3. What is 1 to the power of 3? Any to the power of 1. This is 1, right? 1 times 1 times 1, 3 times, will give you what? 1. Then times 8 is equal to what? 8. So it means dy ds is equal to what? 8. Please take note that the equation can be reframed. And they don't ask you to find dy ds. They can say find the gradient. Or they can say find the slope. It will still be the same answer. Question 35. Simplify 16 over 81 all to the power of 1 over 4 divided by 9 over 16 all to the power of minus 1 over 2. So how do we do that? Okay, 35. This is 16 over 81 to the power of 1 over 4 divided by 9 over 16 to the power of minus 1 over 2. Now, how will this be done? How can we do this? It's very simple. To get started with, to get started with, this is 16 over 81 to the power of 1 over 4 divided by, how do we remove this very negative sign here? Flip the fraction. 16 goes up, 9 comes down. So this is 16 all over 9 to the power of what? 1 over 2. Now, what does the fractional power mean in indices? A fractional power is trying to tell you that we are taking the root of that very thing. So, since it's 1 over 4, I'm going to say, what is the fourth root of 16 over 81? 
divided by this is 1 over 2 right so this will become the square root of 16 over what 9 when it's square root you don't write the number in front of it now what is the fourth root of 16 asking you what is that single number you multiply by its own self four times to get 16 that number is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 will give you 16 so this is 2 over what about 81 what is that single number that you multiply by its own self to give you 81 four times this will become 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 so that's what 3 the number is 3 divided by what is the square root of 16 this one is very simple square root means what is that single number you can times two times, like by its own self twice, to get 16? That's 4 divided by, what about the square root of 9? 3. Now this 2 over 3, can divide change to times? Yes. So 3 will go up, 4 will come down. So this 3 all over what? 4. 3 can take away 3, right? 2 here is 1. 2 into 4 is what? 2. So what becomes the answer? 1 over 2. So that means the answer for that question is what? 1 over 2. Question 36. Question 36. Simplify log 8 base 4 plus log 32. Where is it? Log 32 base 4 minus log 2 base 4. So we have log 8 base 4 plus log 32 base 4 minus log 4 base 2. Well, there are different ways of solving this very question. Uh, let me pick one method. You know, normally, I would have said, since they all have the same base. Now, this is addition, right? So, add, what do you do? You multiply these very numbers. Now, what about when you minus? You will divide, right? But I want to solve this in another way. In another way. Now, this is log. 8 is 2 to the power of 3, right? What about 4? 2 to the power of what? 2 plus log 32 is to the power of what? 5. What about 4? To the power of what? 2. Minus log 2 is just to the power of what? 1. Then what about 4? To the power of what? 2. So what I'm going to do here. It's a kind of shortcut. The final answer here is going to become 3 over 2. 3 over 2 plus 5 over 2. 5 over 2 minus 1 over 2. I like using this method like i love this method a lot like i've got my answer already three plus five is what eight eight minus one is what seven over what two that's because their denominators are the same so i can just evaluate the numerator please take note there's a rule in log reading that was what i used here if you have log a to the power of m then b to the power of n the m can come here so it becomes m over the n comes over becomes over n so that was how i was able to do this to so say 2 over 3 5 over 2 1 over 2 so it's a rule i just applied the rule okay question 37 a chord of a circle of radius 7 cm is 5 cm from the center of the circle you are asked what is the length of the chord Please, don't mistake this. When you are given an angle, when there's an angle, when there's an angle, the length of a chord is 2 arrow sine theta over 2. That's when there's an angle. But in this question, there is no angle. So we're not going to be using that formula. But take note of this formula. We're not going to be using that. Instead, let us draw a circle. 37, let us draw a circle. Can I really draw a circle? Let us see. Let us see. So um, let us assume this is just an assumption that this is a circle. It's a very fine circle. So right about now, let this be the middle. From here to here is radius, right? Because that's the center. Now they said the radius is 7 cm. Now please take note that if I also draw this, that this is also the radius. It's still the same thing. When I join these two parts together, this length AB it's going to be called the chord. It's going to be called the chord. Now they said a chord of a circle of radius 7 cm is 5 cm from the center. We said this is center, right? This is center. 
the chord AB is 5 cm. So it means from here to here is 5 cm. Now, provided we're given length or height, the, that's the distance from the chord to the center. It means this guy is going to be what? A perpendicular line. That's the meaning. It's going to be what? Perpendicular. Now, that also means that it has bisected this very line AB. So it means this is going to be A and A. Bisection means divided into two equal parts. So we're going to have A and what? A. Now let us pick a side, a part of it, a part of it. This is a what? A right angle triangle. And I can use Pythagoras what? Theorem. So what's the hypotenuse here? Hypotenuse is what? 7. So this is 7 squared equal A squared plus what? 5 squared. Pythagoras theorem. That's what I'm using. Now what's 7 squared? 49 equal a squared plus what's 5 squared? 25. Now this is 49. Can plus 25 come over? It becomes minus 25 equal to a squared. Now 49 minus 25, what would that give to you? That would give you 24 equal to what? a squared. Can I remove this very squared? What would it be on the other side? It will become square root. So this is the square root of 24 equal to what? a. Now, would I end here? No. This is A equal to the square root of, remember, sword, sword. 24 is normally 4 times 6, right? So this is 4 times what? 6. So this A equal, what is the square root of 4? 2. Does A have a square root? No. Sorry, does 6 have a square root? No. This will become the square root of what? 6. You leave it that very way. So A is equal to root 6. So that's the meaning. But is A the full length of the chord? No. The full length of the chord is A plus what? A. Remember I said you divided this, this very triangle into two equal parts. So you just solve for only one single A. So it becomes the full length of the chord. The full length will simply become when you add them together or when you double the length of one side. So I can say the length of the chord length of the chord is going to become a plus a which is just 2a a plus a which is 2a so this is 2 times what is about a a is 2 root 6 so 2 times 2 is what 4 root what 6 so that will become our answer question 38 you are asked to evaluate that very guy whenever you see matrix with two straight lines it means they're asking you to find determinant of that very matrix so the question is what is the determinant of that very matrix what is the determinant of that very matrix okay so we have 4 2 minus 1 2 3 1 minus 1 minus 1 3 now how do we find determinant the first thing we have to do is to pick our cofactor sign and reduce these very matrices to a 2 by 2 matrix. So let us pick 4. This will become plus 4. Now, if I pick 4, eliminate this and eliminate this, what will be remaining? Theory 1 minus 1, 3. Look at it. Eliminate this part, eliminate this, what will be remaining? 3, 1 minus 3, 1. Now, this is 2, right? So this is minus 2. Eliminate this very column and eliminate this very row. What will be remaining? 2 minus 1 minus 1 theory. Now this is minus 1, right? So just write the minus 1. If there have been a plus, please take note that the sign I'm using is plus minus plus. We call it the cofactor sign. Okay. Now, if I should eliminate this very column, everything eliminates it, they eliminate everything in the row. What will be remaining? 2 minus 1, theory 1. Okay, so let us proceed. Now, these are 2 by 2 matrices, so their determinants are now easier to compute. So, this is 4 brackets. 3 times 3 is what? 9 minus, minus 1 times 1 is what? Minus 1. Then, this is minus 2 brackets. 2 times 3 is what? 6 minus, Minus 1 times minus 1 is what? 1. To give you plus 1. Then this is minus 1 bracket. 2 times 1 is what? 2 minus. 3 times minus 1 is what? Minus 3. Now this is 4. Then I have 9. 
minus minus is what plus one and this minus two with six minus one minus one bracket two plus what three and this will become four bracket nine plus one is ten then minus two bracket six minus one is what five then minus one bracket two plus three is what five okay four times ten forty two times five ten one times five five four minus ten is thirty thirty minus five is what twenty five so it means the answer for that will be giving you what to be giving you twenty five okay the next one Use the table below to answer question 39 and 40. Use the table below to answer question 39 and 40. Now they said we have max and we have frequencies. So what does that be? The max one, two students scored one max, two students scored two max, three students scored eight max, four students scored four marks and what am i even saying and four students scored five marks so i'm going to repeat that part again so that we understand what frequency actually is now look at two students scored one mark two students scored two marks eight students scored three marks four students scored four marks four students also scored Five max. So the question says the table shows the max obtained in a given test. Question 39. Question 39. How many students took the test? That is the number of students that took the test. Please take note. The number of students that took the test will become the sum of the what? Frequency. The sum of the frequency. So which is 2 plus 2 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4. Now what's 2 plus 2? 4. 4 plus 8 is what? 12. 12 plus 4 is what? 16. 16 plus 4 is what? 20. So it means 20 students took the test. Question 40. You're asked to find the mean mark. I think that's where we're going to have a little, you know, it's not really hard though. So question 40. Question 40 is going to become um, find a mean mark. Now, how do we find mean? We're going to draw a table. X, F, F of X. So, what is our X? X are the marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What will become our frequencies? 2, 2, 8, 4, 4. Now, what is fx? Simply multiply these two parts. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2, 4. 3 times 8, 24. 4 times 4, 16. 5 times 4, 20. I'm going to sum up everything here. So, add up everything that you see here. Can we do that very fast? Mm, yes, I believe so. First of all, if you add up these two, what would you be getting? You'll be getting what? 40. Add up this, what would you be getting? 6. Then this guy is what? 20. 40 plus 20 is 60. 60 plus 6 is what? 66. You will then say that your mean is summation of fx all over summation of f. So what's summation of fx? 66. Summation of f is what? 20. Now all of this be given to you. 66 divided by 2 is normally 33, right? Now, if you divide this 3 by 10, you move the decimal point once. So, this is 3.3. .3. And with this, we'll call it a day. Sorry, we'll call it the end of the jam revision series for 2023. Now, take these questions seriously and revise the topics that I discussed here. Thank you very much for watching this very video. Remember to hit the subscribe button, like this very um, video and share it across to everybody taking jump. Thank you very much.